Okay. Hey, so um, I was wondering for my family, but in general, like what's the risks around somebody going to get their, going to the dentist's office and getting their teeth cleaned or anything else, but what's the risks involved to them during COVID? So, so first I'm gonna say something general about risk. Uh, most people who contract COVID-19 pick up the virus through the air. The vast majority of transmission is through the air. And there's two ways that you could get something through the air. One is to have it projected at you, like if somebody coughed in your face, in which case you could have particles land in your eyes, your mouth, whatever. And the other is the really tiny particles that come out of people's mouths when they talk or sing or breathe even at a slight level, they come out. Uh, and if somebody has a high uh, level of COVID, uh, if they have a high level of coronavirus particles in their uh, lungs or mouth or both, then when they speak, there's gonna be a lot of two micron size um, fluid droplets that come out into the air that then immediately evaporate and they're gone. And if they were carrying a virus, then there's a virus and it's just floating around through the air. And it's really tiny. It's much smaller than you could see. And it will stay floating for days, maybe months or years. And it will stay viable for maybe a day, meaning that it hasn't cracked or fallen apart as it's floating around or gotten hit by ultraviolet or whatever. So can I, I just want to just interrupt you. That seems like there's a difference between the droplet, you know, what, what do they call that? The, um, they have, there's a word for that, the, um, that they call those tiny droplet, droplets, you know, what's that word they use? When, um, oh, aerosol. Aeros when it's aerosolized in a tiny droplet just by speaking, and then there's the actual virus itself. Is that what you're talking about? That re what is the thing that remains once the droplet evaporates? The droplet evaporates. There's whatever a little bit of protein there was from your saliva or uh, lung mucus, and there's maybe a virus particle, if there was a virus in that droplet, okay. all right? So if you want to picture how big a droplet is, let's say the droplet is this big, all right? Then the virus is tiny. Mm. It's just a little teeny, teeny piece of the droplet. It's thousands of times smaller than the droplet. And the droplet itself is already small enough that you probably can't even see it. You can see a ton of them if they're all at once. If you've ever seen a, a cool mist vaporizer, you know, one of those ultrasonic humidifiers, you see the, the mist coming out the top of it, like the cloud. That's billions of aerosolized droplets. And you know that they don't float very far from that humidifier before they disappear, right? They might get this far away before they appear to be gone, all right? But, and that's how far a uh, droplet that comes out when you're vocalizing, that's how far a droplet will get from you before it's gone. You know, it's evaporated in the air, but any virus that it was carrying is still floating. So, so those are the particles that, that are most responsible for transmitting COVID-19. So let's keep that in mind. So if you look at events like that singing event back in March where there were there was one person who had COVID singing in a church choir. They were all social distanced. They were in a big church hall. They're singing for two hours. Well, tens of thousands of droplets came out of the mouth of the one person who was singing who had COVID and didn't know it. And 45 out of the 60 people in that choir got infected, even though they're in a really big, huge room and even though they're very far away. You know, so. The social distancing is meaningful for a cough where there are big droplets that are being projected and then are gonna to fall to the ground. But social distancing doesn't do much for you uh, for the aerosolized droplets because they're floating in a stream and they're going with the currents in the air. And if they happen to drift by somebody and they breathe them in, they'll breathe them in. Actually, I think you misspoke just now. You said you said it, social distancing doesn't matter for the aerosolized droplets. It I doesn't. You meant, it no, doesn't. I meant that. You meant that. So not the actual, you're, now, you're still not talking about the actual 
virus particle floating. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the virus particle that's left after the aerosolized drop. Got it. Okay. But, but so, you know, you think if, if somebody's going to cough on you, right, and that cough's going to fall on the floor if it goes six feet, actually it doesn't. The MIT studies have shown it could go up to 30 feet. But six feet makes you a lot safer from these projectile particles that are going to fall down. All right. And that's useful for the projectile particles, but that's not how most people are catching a virus. Most people aren't catching the virus because somebody coughed in their face. Most people are catching the virus because they're in a room that somebody's in who talks. You know, you look at all these, all these people around Trump. They weren't kissing each other. You know, they didn't cough in each other's face, but they were in a room together and they were talking and one or more of them had COVID and now a bunch of them have COVID and that's how it works. So now let's look at the dentist office. A dentist office is a thousand times worse if somebody who is a patient goes in there for a procedure and they have COVID and they don't know. So they're sitting in the chair, their head's back, right? The dentist's in there with either a drill or maybe the person's getting their teeth cleaned or whatever, but there's some fast spinning thing there in their mouth, right? And it's flinging tiny little particles all over the place. That's why they put a bib on you, right? When you're in the dentist's office, because there's this mist coming out of your mouth. Well, if there's a person in that office as a patient who has COVID, the amount of mist that's gonna come out of their mouth is enough to infect everyone that moves anywhere in that whole office complex for the next day. All right, so now if everybody's wearing, anyone who's wearing an N95 mask, you know, they could conceivably have, if they have a good nose fit on that mask, they could have enough protection to not inhale any of those particles. But a normal cloth mask, those particles go right through. You know, so let's suppose it takes one particle <laughs> to infect you, which is how many it takes, right? And maybe if you inhale, a breath and you inhale a particle, but you know when somebody takes a drag on a cigarette, they pull the smoke in and if they breathe out, most of the smoke comes back out, right? So most of the particles that go in your lungs come back out, they don't land somewhere. But if one lands in there, that's all it takes. You know, that thing's gonna find and match up with an ACE2 receptor on a cell and you turn into a virus factory. So in a dentist's office, the real danger is from a patient who doesn't know that he or she has COVID and the dentist doesn't know, and that patient gets worked on or gets their teeth cleaned, and now everyone in the office gets exposed. So if you're gonna be a patient in a dentist's office, the only way to be really safe is to be the first patient of the day. That's it, that's the only way. Otherwise, it's a statistical game. You don't know. You don't know if somebody's been in there before you who had COVID. Now, maybe some dentists are going to start requiring uh, rapid tests before a patient gets worked on. That is not happening yet. If it does happen, that'll make things a lot safer, but it is not happening yet. And there are some dentists who have a vacuum thing that they'll stick in front of people's mouths that will suck in all those particles and filter them through a HEPA filter. And if they do that with every single patient they treat, that's a pretty safe dentist's office. But even in Western Massachusetts, at one of the most expensive dental practices in the state of Massachusetts, um, and they have those vacuum things in every room, they only use them with the hygienists who are doing teeth cleaning. They don't use them when the dentists are doing procedures because the dentists find them inconvenient. Wow. Well, that's pretty dumb, all right? But that's the level of smart or dumb that's out there currently. Mm. You know, that's what you're dealing with. So I would not go to a dentist for just for tooth cleaning right now. It's not worth it. Wait a year if you have to, you know? It doesn't make that much difference. But if you have to go, uh, to get a filling or a crown or an implant or something that's a real emergency kind of dental thing, then 
be, if you can, be the first patient of the day. Mm. That keeps you a lot safer because overnight, all those little particles that were drifting in the air are going to fracture and crack and become unviable. They're still going to be drifting in the air, but they're not going to be viable virus particles anymore by morning that could hurt you. That's great to know. So now what if, you know, somebody's coming, hey, but my dentist is safe, but everybody wears a mask. And I know this is maybe re repeating, but that's a yeah, response. They do. That I patient, but that patient who goes in there who has COVID and doesn't know it can't be wearing a mask because they're getting their teeth worked on. And it's that working on their teeth that's throwing the stuff out into the air. There's no way around it. Okay. And, and when you're in there as a patient after them and you're in the chair with no mask on, that's when you're really in danger. And frankly, anyone who's wearing a surgical mask is really in danger. And anyone who's wearing a cloth mask is really in danger. Once those particles are there in the air, a surgical mask, you know, you may see a statistic that says, here, let me grab one of these, that this surgical mask will filter out 80% of coronavirus particles. Well, it will, if the air is passing through it, but press one of these to your lips and try and breathe through it. You will not be able to. When you have one of these things on and you're breathing, you're breathing around it. You're not breathing through it. You might be breathing 10% through it, but you're breathing around it. And any, any virus particles that are in the air, you're still gonna get them. Same with a cloth mask. The only mask that's gonna protect you from virus particles in the air is an N95 mask. Okay, and let's um, have another conversation about specifically about the mass, but um, thank you very much. Sure. I really appreciate it, Lee. Okay, so I'm gonna um, end this call. I'm gonna actually just end the recording.